what's up you guys i'm back with another video and in this video i'm going to take you over how i set up my new m1 macbook air for software development so let's get started so i finally got my hands on the new m1 macbook air this is the new macbook air that apple launched uh, i have it right here and it is it comes with the apple silicon m1 chip this is the base variant so actually i've been waiting to get my hands on the m1 macbook pro i mean not the m1 but the second generation apple silicon right so i didn't buy an m1 mac yet because i was waiting for the more powerful and the bigger macbook pros that are going to come out this year and also the other thing was a lot of the softwares that i really needed for my daily workflows were not available on the m1 or were not available for the apple silicon so i was waiting all this while and then finally i gave up i thought why not just get the macbook air for now and so i got the base variant m1 macbook air and uh, once the new macbook pros come out the ones with the bigger screens the 14 and 16 inch screens are what i'm actually waiting for so once they do come out then we'll probably hop on to that but for the time being i got this uh, m1 macbook air and i'll be filming a lot of videos for this and i'll be using this as my personal laptop i have this uh, so this is my uh, main laptop this is the 16 inch 2020 macbook pro that i have here both in space gray because i like the space gray color so uh, this 16 inch macbook pro is currently my uh, daily driver but i'm going to replace this with this 13 inch macbook air because it's so light and portable and i think the battery life is wonderful and the performance obviously we're going to check that out so yeah in this video i'm just going to take you over how to set up a new m1 macbook air for software development so yeah let's get started all right so let's get started first things first what i did is i just came in, I set up my Apple ID and I set up a bunch of other things like my trackpad. I enabled tap to click, I maximized so my tracking speed, it's usually somewhere here. I like maximum speed so that my tracker moves really fast because I'm used to it. And let me quickly show you, this is the base M1 MacBook Air with 8GB of RAM. The, this is the base version and uh, yeah, let's just get started. First things first, we're going to go to Safari and we're gonna do the one thing it's really useful for which is to download chrome so uh, i mean <laughs> i do like safari it has improved a lot lately but uh, chrome is definitely better in my opinion and chrome is usually more useful for development purposes because it has a lot of uh, extensions and uh, developer tools which are available so first impressions uh, m1 does feel really fast but it's also a lot of the uh, along with the hardware which i'll probably make another video about so basically m1 op operates on a risk mode of system so if you studied uh, computer science and computer engineering there was a subject called computer architecture in which we studied uh, you know there are CISC and risk architectures reduced instruction set and complex instruction set computers so ARM or uh, M1 is based on that reduced instruction set architecture which usually focuses on increasing the so the number of instructions increases but the each instruction is simpler right so there are load store add and those fundamental operations so that each instruction with every CPU cycle one instruction will be completed basically that's the whole premise and in the complex instruction set there can be complicated instructions more that do more so in one line of one instruction it can do multiple jobs not multiple jobs but uh, you know like like load store add all three can be done with one single uh, instruction in the complex side so the cpu cycles might increase so that's why that's the architecture behind the intel's uh, 86 family that started with the whatever 8084 uh, 8086 microprocessors so uh, here this is a different premise the hardware itself is tuned differently to manage simpler instructions which are basic atomic instructions but each instruction can be completed in one cycle so uh, there are advantages pros and cons to both with proper utilization and with software enhancements and optimizations uh, this m1 chip performs really fast which is uh, already evident i've seen how fast uh, it is i mean basically new macs are fast i mean macs in general are fast but this is slightly faster and more efficient that's where i'm impressed that uh, you know it doesn't really take up so if you see my battery is still at 97 percent we'll see how long it is uh, how long it lasts i guess but yeah so i'll set chrome as my default browser and i don't want to send any stats to chrome yeah i want to use chrome as my default browser right so i do not want to sign in at this point i'll just open an incognito window uh, because i want to do a bunch of things um, 
okay so once i got chrome first thing i want is i want homebrew so uh homebrew is this package manager sort of thing where i can do brew install uh python brew install node whatever right so brew is a package manager so uh, i can install homebrew and i just saw that homebrew recently launched their uh, m1 mac binary so it does natively support m1 mac now although they suggest that we use the uh, intel binary for now because the mac one is not fully supported uh, either way i'm just gonna go to the default terminal so this is the default terminal that comes with mac and later on we will install uh, item 2 and oh my zsh and stuff like that for now let me just install uh, homebrew okay so i need sudo access one second let me just uh, key in my password xcode command line tools yes I, oh, I forgot to install so you need to install xcode command line uh, tools in order to run a lot of these commands which is xcode hyphen select hyphen hyphen install i think so but yeah homebrew does it for you so uh, let me see if i can increase the size yeah i hope it's visible so now that i've increased the font size i should probably increase it even more considering a lot of you will be watching it on mobile devices so i think this should be good enough if i go beyond this my eyes are gonna hurt while we do that uh let me see if i think vs code has launched their own uh, mac binaries m1 mac binaries so uh mac so insider binary is actually used with apple silicon chip right uh, okay so it's downloading now Okay, so I got the insiders build of VS Code, which is sort of, I think their beta version, which probably not stable, but it's fine. I guess we'll start using it and then we'll see if, uh, if there are any issues with that. I don't mind getting rid of it and installing the Intel version, considering that it should probably work. Okay. Okay. So we now have brew installed. Let me just quickly check brew doctor. Uh, okay. Man, not found. Okay, I wanna go. I have my ZSH history and ZSH. Okay, let me just uh, touch ZSH RC and I wanna see. pt slash homebrew okay so uh, i'm not able to start brew which means that my brew is not in the path so what i can do is uh, i can go to um, so now that i have my zsh rc i can do vim zsh rc and i can insert so now i can save this and i can do my exec shell now it should have brew right so now we have access to brew let me quickly do brew doctor your system is ready to use brew let me clear this let me try brew install item 2 so iTerm2 is a terminal emulator. It's slightly better than the default terminal that comes with Mac. And it's a lot of, uh, it has a lot of customizability options. So that's why a lot of the developers prefer using iTerm2 over the default terminal. There are alternatives as well, but I think I'm used to iTerm2 and it does the job really well. So I'll just install iTerm2 now. All right, so now we are in iTerm2 and we can, what we can do is install the shell integration install shell integration uh, which has which installs a bunch of things that make it work better exec shell 
all right so now we uh, what we'll do is we will brew install uh, git so we need git because uh, obviously right we need to use github and stuff like that so brew so once you have installed brew you can let brew handle everything else okay so uh, i've installed git let me install node actually i could have installed it before this but let me install it now brew install node node is done now let me just brew install uh, zsh so i know mac uh, i think since catalina or since uh, high sierra mac os started using z z shell as its default shell instead of bash still i think it's best to use a different installation of the z shell to not interfere with the system version so that's why we install uh, zsh using brew and then we want to start using this uh, and instead of user slash local it's supposed to be um, opt slash home brew i think this should be it let me try so that mouse pointer thing was this uh, user slash local instead of this i'll do opt slash homebrew okay so i think that worked let me quickly echo my shell again okay maybe i need to exec and then echo toggle shell it's still the default one maybe i need to restart yes now we are running the homebrews version of shell i will probably install oh my zsh oh my zsh So again we need to run a shell script that will install this. Uh, yeah, this is my script. I am gonna run this thing. Okay. Right, so I think now we are running uh oh my ZSH. What I can now do is I can install my theme. So my favorite theme is Oceanic Next. So uh, I'm gonna find let search portion make next snack return. <clears throat> so this is the theme. I'll just download this for now. I need to go to my item preferences profiles. Okay, I need to go to colors. Color presets. Okay, let me try this one. Okay, yeah, this is the one that I wanted. So now I have my Oceanic Next theme and yeah I think we are pretty much done here uh, we have we don't have node still okay so now we are running uh, node hopefully yes now we have node uh, let me also do install yarn okay now we have yarn cool so i think we are pretty much done here now all right that's it for this one i hope you liked this video if you did smash that like button leave a comment down below if you have any other questions for me or you can always connect with me on instagram and leave me a dm i'll try to help you out in whatever way i can and well that's it thanks for watching